and today we're going to be looking at something that um, I'm not going to have a full-blown review for this product because of the nature of what it is. Um, although it's something that uh, we're, we're definitely qualified to take a look at, uh, I, I just don't really have the equipment or the ability to fully push this to its limits and do um, a proper review, but I, I am going to be putting it into production use after we take a look at it and uh, we'll have a follow-up a few months from whenever this airs um, with with how the install procedure went and uh, how it's been performing since this is um, from a company I know you've heard this name in a couple of videos I've done it's by Microtik um, this is one of their router board cloud core routers um, and uh, my, uh, my my primary employer purchased a couple of these to replace some failing Cisco gear in our network stack and uh, we're going to be using these for BGP routing primarily. So what we've got here, this is a CCR 1036 8G 2S+. Um, that's a, a mouthful but it actually tells you everything we need to know about the model. This is uh, one of their cloud core routers, not a cloud core switch. Those are CRS devices. Um, the 1036 tells me that this is a 36 core CPU in this particular model. Um, this is, I believe, a 1.2 gigahertz tile CPU. 8G is uh, 8 gigabit ports. 2S plus means I have a pair of 10 gig ports. Um, looks like a pretty Pretty straightforward accessory setup. We've got a couple of power cables and then inside uh, this piece of cardboard we've got some more foam, some rack ears which I'll be using, and then a screw kit or a rubber pad kit if you wanted to use it on a desktop. And then we have the router itself, you can see I've got a pair of 10 gig ports, I have 8 gigabit ethernet inter interfaces, micro SD, a console port, USB, um, and for a SMB firewall, this thing has really got everything you could ask it to. Um, this is an 8G2S Plus, and I believe we ordered the EM variant, and yeah, I can see that here and one of the things I'm going to be answering the question of so that EM means this is the extended memory model with 8 gigs of RAM there is a standard model with 4 and not directly from Microtik but I have seen a few places selling the EM variant with 16 gigs of RAM instead which I believe this is socketed memory and I believe it is also um, DDR3 I just want to get a look at what those modules are so we're gonna open it up before we power it on and just get a quick look at everything that's inside here this is the Creation Space Lithium Ion Driver, I believe if you've watched our build on the system we used to test that TrendNet card and that we'll be turning into a gaming system shortly, this will look somewhat familiar, so just flip that up so I've got somewhere to put these screws. This is socketed memory. This isn't too bad getting into this so far. I pulled out six screws. These are all number two Phillips. They weren't under any ridiculous torque. Alrighty, let's take a look. So, not a ton that I'm seeing so far. 
looks like we've got an M.2 slot for, I believe, an M2 SATA. And I've got some screws that, are these a size smaller? I think those are a size smaller. Yep, so we've got some number one Phillips screws over a shroud, and I see some modules soldered to the board. Those look like RAM at a glance, so this may be limited to eight, or maybe eight on board with a single sodium slot, so I'll know in a second. Oh. Huh. Well, I only see four modules there, which is definitely not enough for eight gigs of RAM. I wonder if they're under the board, which would be a disappointment from a upgrade standpoint. So we're going to unplug these. And very gently unplug the ribbon cable for the LCD. Also a little disappointed to see three pin fans, although not super surprised. Um, it's a fairly common... Let's see, I want a little slotted driver. Fairly, fairly common upgrade to see people take these Microtik devices and uh, swap the fans out to quiet them down some. Um, typically, something like 40 millimeter Noctuas are the choice for that. Man, that is. Ugh. There we go. That is one stiff socket. Okay. So with that unplugged and the fans out, the only thing holding this in should be these screws on the board here, which those Although still number ones are far too tight. For a lithium ion driver, so. We're just going to grab a regular handheld screwdriver and uh, at least break these loose. I was hoping that the memory was going to be upgradable since they offer both a standard and an EM model I was hoping it would be uh, socketed so I'm still still hoping that when I get uh, inside I should say when I get to the underside of the board, I'll find a uh, sodium. Not that 8 gigs is a terrible amount of memory for a device like this. Um, it's a respectable amount of RAM for any kind of firewall. But... I was, was still hoping that it would be upgradable, or easy, easily upgradable at any rate. Alright, with that out... Oh, hey, I missed a screw. just kind of wiggle, wiggle loose. Oh. 
I say I know I loosened that. Apparently I didn't take that one out all the way. And nope, unfortunately it looks like all of our memory is soldered and that they've got it on both the front and the back. Yeah, there's no removable modules. This is just the, the CPU heat spreader and the heat sink. That's um, disappointing, but not unexpected. Like I said, there, there's a couple of places I've seen people selling a 16 gig variant of this, and I wonder if that's a special order that they put in um, with Microtik directly then. So, well, I, I'm glad I got the 8 gig model instead of trying to uh, save a buck and upgrade the 4, since this is available as a 4 gig variant. I was, was hoping to see upgradable memory, but I'm not surprised that I don't. Overall, um, everything else in here looks... Pretty fantastic. I'm, I'm a little surprised that there's not a fan here for cooling the power supplies directly. Um, I suppose it simply wasn't necessary. That was fun and exciting. So let's snap those back in. And with the little exploration for memory modules out of the way, um, before we put that shroud back on, let's go ahead and just do a, a quick tour. Um, so this is pretty straightforward. We've got the internal flash memory here. We have four memory modules here, and we have four on the other side. We've got a total capacity of eight gigabytes of RAM. Here, under these heat sinks, we have the uh, ASICs for these individual SFP Plus ports. We've got a tiny ASIC for each of those gigabit ethernet ports, and it looks like those are made by Etheros. Um, looks like those are AR8033 AL1A. That means anything to any of you. Um, so, beyond that, there appears to be a fan controller here, some miscellaneous logic here. We've got a little I.O. chip here, probably for the USB port and potentially the serial console. And then don't see an interface for the micro SD card that's probably directly here. There's a small controller chip of some port here. CDCM61001. And it looks like it might be attached to the M2 slot here. This might be some sort of SATA controller. It's certainly large enough for that. Um, and then, like I said, underneath this heat sink, there's a 36 core tile CPU. Um, they use the same tile family of CPUs in their entire CCR stack currently, uh, with the exception of the new 2000 series units. Um, so you, you very quickly know that a, a CCR 
1009 has a 9 core CPU, a 1016 is a 16, this is a 36, and then the, the very top end they have a 1072, um, which is a, a completely 10 gig unit that you're supposed to be able to pass 80 gigs of traffic through. Um, this particular unit, I believe, is rated for 26 gigs simultaneously um, with a reasonable amount of rules and restrictions on it. So, like I said, I'm using this to handle a pair of single, uh, in, or sorry, I'm going to be using these primarily for BGP. We've only got a pair of 500 mag incoming links. The primary reason this unit was selected was to have enough RAM compared to the 1016 um, for the, the table required for all the routes. Um, let's see, other stuff here. Uh, one thing you don't get on Microtik gear that you usually do get on higher end enterprise gear is hot swap power supplies. One thing I haven't mentioned, the price point for this unit, uh, we paid about $1,100 for it. That makes it relatively expensive and inexpensive at the same time, which way you want to look at it. Uh, in our case, these were price-wise a godsend compared to the Cisco ISRs we were looking at buying a $1,000 software license, or sorry, a $2,000 software license per unit just to handle our line rate worth of traffic um, for BGP routing and nothing else. It's not doing anything fancy. Uh, so from that particular standpoint, these are far cheaper, uh, for people who may be so inclined to, you know, roll your own with hardware, these are a bit on the more expensive side compared to throwing a couple of nicks in a box and standing up something like PFSense or OpenSense and calling it good. So it's all relative. Now in this case, um, at home, I'm more than happy to stand up PFSense, or OpenSense in my case, since I Hyper-V and call it good. At one of our smaller sites, um, I may have been perfectly happy with that, but we actually selected one of their smaller router board units that cost us less than 200 bucks to handle a whole building. Um, and I've heard that particular unit, the router board 3011, handling single incoming gigabit uh, traffic without much fuss. So for the lack of support headaches that's given me, um, it was worth the additional cost over potentially rolling my own and saving some. I probably could have for, I don't know, 500 bucks a unit made something that would have handled BGP just fine with plenty of RAM. Um, I probably wouldn't have gone with the M82 we looked at during our refurb build for that uh, test system. I would have gone with something a little more rack mount friendly, you know, one use server off eBay. Um, but I would have been looking at, you know, a whole lot more power and potentially noise. And as I said, at that point, at the end of the day, if something goes wrong, it's it's on me. Um, I don't have a vendor to talk to. Microtik might not necessarily be the absolute favorite as far as vendors to talk to, but they are a vendor. And if, God forbid, two years from now, something happens to this, um, I can do a four like swap out, just reload the configuration and call it good. Or I can, uh, what kind of warranty do these come with? It actually doesn't say. I wonder if it says, no, oh, I'm sure it says on their website. Um, so for, from that standpoint, the CCR 1036 here is just 
peace of mind. We we saved money over the Cisco gear, but still bought peace of mind because it, it's going to have some kind of vendor support. You know what? This is fighting with me because these are number two Phillips and I'm using the wrong size driver. Beautiful. I'm not going to install the rack gears on it right now. That's just a four screw process on the front. And the reason I'm not going to do that is because I'm going to put it back in its box to bring it to its final install point. But we are going to, at this point, grab a power adapter for it. And I'm going to plug in both of those. And we're going to power it on. I'm going to take my laptop and plug into ETH1 and sign into its web UI. And, you know, fire up OBS and take a look and update it to the most recent uh, LT. Alrighty, so real quick look at things now that my VPN is not fighting with me. Um, it defaulted to 8.8.1. Looks like it's spinning up a little, being forced to think about that. Huh. I guess those can get loud. Um, looks like we shipped with router OS 646.1. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go to Microtech's website. Oh, yeah, my laptop's dumping hot air right on it. No wonder it's... All right, so... Actually, that's fairly recent. 646.1 would have been the most recent stable just a couple of months ago. Um, so that tells me that the supply chain is fairly short on these, leaving the factory. So I'm going to download 647.1. And since this is a, a CRS device, I'm just going to download... Oh, nope. I spoke too soon. So this is a CCR device. I'm going to download the main packages and the extra packages. Um, so one thing that's great about all of these Microtech devices from their very smallest $30 access point all the way up to these cloud core routers is they've got one software stack and although they've got it on you know, a couple of different software vendors here like we can see the new CCR 2004 is actually an ARM 64 device um, you can download all this all the same software for all of them and although there may be occasionally things that are you know an extra package for this device compared to part of the main distribution it's very easy to just grab those here um, a, a good example these MIP devices the CRS devices their switches I've I've got one of them here all the same stuff that is in the web fig here is in my web fig for my switch. So I can just as easily 
go set up BGP routing, which is what I purchased this for, on my Switch and test it before buying my $1,000 box for BGP routing. All right, so uh, we're just going to do something simple. We're going to do a software update. So it's in my downloads. There's my NPK file. The way they handle um, updates is typically pretty straightforward. Usually it's as simple as uploading the file to it. And then, all right, it says it's uploaded. System reboot. And since that file was placed in the root of its uh, file share, when it reboots, it'll come up, see the new firmware file, and just install it. I'm, I'm not messing with any uh, SFTP, no, sorry, TFTPS servers to do any of this. I just Uploaded the file, restarted the device, and I'll check on it in a few minutes. It looks like I'm actually a couple of versions behind on mine. So, router OS 6457. Um, I probably installed the long... No, I would have installed the stable branch. It's just a switch. I got that switch in November. So it looks like there have been two major releases to the stable branch. All right, four five, four six, four seven. Uh, since then. And and just like that, we can see it came up. The page refreshed when the device restarted, and it's running the latest build of Router OS. Um, so, I guess I'll take a second to talk about how router OS specifically works. Um, so, let's just bring up the license comparison table. Basically, for router board devices, which is what all of their switches and routers are, we just have this table. And all this table tells me is that for this box, which is a level 6 device, I have 30 days of initial configuration to support, so I can reach out for help for the BGP stuff. I don't plan to. Um, but it's there if I need it. And then beyond that, you know, this one doesn't have any Wi-Fi built in, but it would be supported if I had a wireless chip on it. Uh, same thing for client and bridge, and here we get into where things start to uh, change. So RIP, OSFP, and BGP protocols are supported on 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay. That's well, pretty straightforward. And 3's got to note that it's only for router board devices. Technically, um, there are ways to get that level 3 license that on a device that's not a router board. Um, EIOP tunnels, level 6 we have unlimited. And here's where things start to get a little different between this, which is a level 6 device, and my Switch out there which is a level 5 device. Theoretically if I took my switch and I was running a VPN server on it, which would be a terrible idea by the way, um, I'm limited to 500 PPOE tunnels, 500 PPTP tunnels, and 500 L2TP tunnels. That's not to say that there aren't level 4 and 5 devices where you would run those tunnels, but my experience with the Microtech gear, 
tells me that if I went and bought one of their lower end routers, I'm going to run out of resources on the device, be it RAM or CPU, before I really run into, into these limits. And I'm generally better off just buying a bigger box than I am upgrading the license if I, for some reason, don't have a feature available in my device. Um, most of this stuff, the level 6 devices are the only devices with enough hardware in them to run an unlimited number of tunnels or an unlimited number of hotspot users. Um, but unlike other vendors where, hey, you can only run, we'll say, 100 megs of traffic through your $1,000 router, which is part of the reason we're buying these is because that was the case with our prior vendor, uh, there's no artificial limits where they want to sell me more software. These are all generally in lockstep with the hardware that they're available on. You know, I mentioned level 4 devices. Well, what would be a level 4 device? Typically, those are on the same platform or ballpark performance category as a home router. Well, I haven't seen a piece of a consumer kit for a home router that I would want to push 200 separate VPN tunnels through. I don't think I'm suddenly going to want to just because the feature is there and I can set one up relatively easily. Um, so, just sign in. A lot of this stuff is really easy to look at. Um, you know, I can see all my interfaces. I can see the traffic between my laptop and it. There's a bridge. I don't actually have a bridge set up. You could theoretically bridge all these ports together. Um, we're not going to do anything like that here. But if I look at my switch, there is a bridge set up. And it's straightforward. So... Um, you know, kid control. We're not going to use any kid control in this. System stuff. If I look at the health, I can see the fan speeds. I can see the temperatures. It knows there's only two fans in there. Um, God, 6,000 RPM sounds ridiculous. It really sounds like their fan curve could use a little adjustment. Because at 32 and 48 degrees, I'm not particularly worried from a temperature standpoint, I would expect to see 6,000 RPM at 70 degrees Celsius. Um, the good news is it's a relatively open platform. I could run a custom script to adjust those fan speeds. Or like I said, uh, a set of 40 millimeter Noctua's if I was really concerned with the noise these are making. Um, so, long story short, This is a piece of enterprise gear that is generally outside the purview of Pocketables. Um, but I wanted to talk about it for a couple of reasons. Number one is I was excited to get it. These are super high-end boxes compared to what I've used before. And, well, I was curious to just take a look at what was inside and figured some of you might be as well. Um, number two, some of their smaller equipment is well within the range of pocketables and even some of the things that this can do. Uh, this supports having a wireless modem attached to it via USB. Uh, some of their gear is LTE boxes. They even sell, I mean, LTE base stations, which are definitely a bit above and beyond what we would normally handle. Um, so if you want to see more of their stuff, or if you have questions about it, and say, you know, can I do X on one of these magical Microtik boxes we've talked about, um, you know, reach out and go ahead and ask us in the comments. Um, as we've covered more networking gear, I definitely wanted to highlight some of the things that that networking gear would normally talk to. Now, this device doesn't have 10G base T. And most of the networking stuff we've talked about does. 
uh, or is 10G base T or, or 5G base T. But what this does have is a pair of SFP plus ports. And in a small business, um, although this is overkill for that, something like 328 that I have in my rack would be a perfectly acceptable core switch for a small office. It's got four 10 gig ports and 24 PoE, one gig ports, and weighs in at about 350 bucks and supports router OS level five, which has got all your, your VLAN goodiness, and honestly, other than some of the VPN stuff that this is capable of, um, has everything uncapped. Not that the switch actually has a CPU capable of keeping up with if I suddenly dumped 500 VPN tunnels on it. Um, so I wanted to put some of that stuff in context. The same people who are buying $100 network adapters are generally in the same environments that have that $350 switch and routers like this one, um, or, or even smaller routers in the stack, you know. There was a uh, client of mine for some, some side work I did where we installed a CCR1009 as their main business firewall because they needed VPN access due to the current health crisis. Um, and what they had before just didn't give them what they needed. So to serve an office of 25, you know, I picked a smaller CCR unit and I believe I got the fanless model, um, which was a nice touch since it's an art studio. But if they had four times as many people, I might have gone up to one on this level. So, just a little bit of context. You know, I, I'd love to say we're gonna start doing full network reviews. I don't have the traffic generators for it. They cost tens of thousands of dollars for some of the decent ones. Um, I don't have the space for it. You know, my studio, is just barely large enough that I can't touch both walls at the same time. So to suddenly have full stacks of enterprise gear in here for product reviews, number one, wouldn't be comfortable for me. Number two, would uh, <laughs> just wouldn't fit very well. Uh, so anyway, all that out of the way. If you have any questions about this device, why we picked this over something else, um, you know, why I chose a CRS328 for my home switch, or just general, hey, I'm looking at throwing one of these in a network, and which one of these is actually going to do everything that I want, because um, they're a very technical... Microtech prevents things very technically and very clear-cut, so that can make it rather difficult to say, will it do this? And... Here's a picture of a router and a bunch of technical specs, and that's it. Um, so, any of that kind of stuff, go ahead and throw a question in the comments below, and we'll be back to our regularly scheduled type of small home, small office, uh, prosumer gear in the next video. Um, I want to say, you know, thank you to our patrons who help support the channel and uh, make some things possible for us. I want to thank Alextrix for providing our opening and closing credits. And uh, as I mentioned already, you know, thank you for watching. If you liked what you saw here, definitely subscribe. And um, if you have any questions or anything, hit us up in the comments below. Thanks for watching.